Hello and welcome to this video on common beginner mistakes in structural equation modeling. My name is Christian Geiser. On this channel, I present weekly statistics tutorials, usually related to structural equation modeling, factor analysis, multi-level analysis, or latent class analysis, and often related to the M plus software. In this video here, I don't want to talk about M plus specific issues, but generally about things that go wrong when people first start out with structural equation models or when they are beginners with those kinds of models. And so in my work as a researcher and consultant, I often get similar questions about why does this not work? Why does this not look good? And so I want to address some uh, very common issues that can go wrong with structural equation modeling. Oftentimes when people first fit structural equation models, they are disappointed because they get a fit that is um, not ideal for the model that they specify. And so one reason that this happens is that people often use at the beginning too many indicators for their latent factors and or in general, they use models that are too large and too complex and they don't realize how many restrictions are in a structural equation model. For example, when you have a factor and you have 10 indicators on this factor. So this is a very, very restricted model that um, has many assumptions about the data that are rather strict. And so what many people don't uh, realize is that uh, when you have a single factor and you have a set of indicators, then the underlying assumption is that these indicators are unidimensional in measuring a single factor. And so with 10 items or more, or even with fewer than 10 items, it is pretty difficult to find a set of variables that are perfectly unidimensional. And so this is often a reason for why a model shows misfit when you have many, many indicators and they are not homogeneous. They measure different factors. They don't just measure a single factor and measurement error. And there's a lot going on in the data. And so then that can cause disappointment. Likewise, when you have models where you have, where you test all kinds of different latent variables at the same time in a single model, then there are many, many ways in which a model could show misfit, for example, because some of the paths that aren't included are actually present, are actually non-zero in the population. And so then when you have a complex model, you may not know, okay, which path am I missing here? Which latent variables should be connected that I uh, didn't specify a path for and so on. Therefore, my advice is always when you start out with SEM, try models that are simple first. Break down your model into sub-models where you maybe first look at the measurement structure, even at individual factors first to see if that works. So for example, if you have a model with four factors, don't start out with your four factors right away and all the indicators that measure those factors, but rather start out maybe with just one factor or two factors, see what it looks like when you specify a model with two correlated factors, for example, and see if the measurement structure works in the way that you assume and also think carefully about your measurement for which indicators does it really make sense that they measure a common factor and that they're interchangeable indicators of the same underlying construct or dimension. So breaking down the model is a good thing at the beginning. Don't start with a model that is too complex because then oftentimes this will cause you disappointment. Another issue that I frequently see is that people are confused about model fit, global model fit of a structural equation model versus R squared in the model as a part of the estimate. So oftentimes people find that, or sometimes people find that their model fits fine, they get a good model fit, but their R squared is low for the endogenous or dependent variables in the model and then they're disappointed. Or they find that other effects are small, that their path coefficients are small, that factor loadings are small, and so on. And then they say, well, my model fit well, I got a good chi-square, good uh, other fit indices, but my R-squared is so low, how is it po possible? And so 
This is also a very common misunderstanding that people think that when the overall model fit is good, then also R squared needs to be um, good and needs to be uh, high. And that is not necessarily the case. So that is not directly related. A model can show a good fit to the observed covariances and or the mean structure, but need not have strong effects. So that is not something that comes with the other issue, um, at least not directly. And so therefore, this is something that um, is completely expected and completely normal that a model might fit data well, might reproduce the observed covariance as well and the observed means, but does not explain much. And so those are separate issues that we look at global model fit, and then we look at the parameter estimates. And even when the model fit is good, the parameter estimates, they um, can be not in line with what you expect or not in line with theory, and they need not be high explained variance and strong effects, even when a model fits well. And a third issue that I want to discuss today is a third um, a problem or a mistake that people often make is that they don't include missing data. So many, many SEM programs now have fabulous capabilities of including cases that have partial missing data, for example, drop out over time or certain questions that weren't answered. And so a lot of people um, then we'll drop cases. We'll use, for example, listwise deletion, even though there are now better methods available for addressing and handling missing data. Even when you have a lot of missing data, then it's still a better idea to use in, in many situations, at least to use all the information that you have in your data, all the cases that provide at least some data. And so most SEM programs such as M plus or Amos or Lavan or other programs now offer full information, maximum likelihood estimation, which is a very, very convenient approach to handle missing data when you have continuous outcome variables where you don't even see that all the data are being used. There's not much you have to do really to use this. It's even the default in many programs now, and it allows you to make use of all your data. Another option is multiple imputation, which is practical or can be better when you use item level data, ordinal items or so as indicators of latent variables, then multiple imputation can be used to address missing data. And so doing this has a lot of advantages because first of all, you don't throw your data away. You don't lose as much power. And also one thing that many people don't realize is that full information, maximum likelihood estimation and multiple imputation actually rest on less strict assumptions about the missing data mechanism than do um, more ad hoc, more traditional methods such as listwise or pairwise deletion. So with listwise deletion, for example, we have a very strong assumption that the data, data that are missing are missing completely at random. And that is an assumption that we do not have to make with uh, or in order to use full information, maximum likelihood estimation or multiple imputation where the data only need to satisfy the missing at random mechanism, which is more, which is a um, less strict assumption than missing completely at random data. So this is another um, beginner's mistake. It doesn't only apply to a structural equation modeling. It applies to basically all statistical analyses that you should not throw missing data away in most situations that you should use a modern method for addressing missing data. And one last thing that I want to discuss today in uh, this series on beginner mistakes in SEM is the question of causality. So many people think that when a structural equation model fits the data well and you find reasonable parameter estimates, that then you can claim that the causal assumptions that are in the model are proven. That is something that I very frequently hear from people that they say, oh, but this model fit well. So this means my causal theory about this phenomenon um, now must be correct. And this is also something that is simply not true, unfortunately, because we can very often or most of the time in structural equation models simply reverse some of the path, simply change their direction and we get an equivalent or near equivalent model that fits the data equally well or similarly well and it makes completely opposite 
um, causal assumptions about how the variables are related and what variable causes what other variable. And so this means that SEM can never prove or with SEM, you can never prove that causal assumptions are correct. You can only falsify a theoretical model, namely when your model doesn't fit or when your model doesn't show the effects that are expected based on the theory, then it means your uh, causal claims have been disproven and are not correct. And this is something that you can do with SEM, but you can never prove that something is correct. And keep in mind that for causality, a number of assumptions need to be fulfilled that have nothing to do with SEM per se. We have to have temporal precedence and other uh, things have to be in place for um, being certain that X causes Y and not Y causes X. And so since SEM can be applied to non-longitudinal data, I meaning cross-sectional data, where none of the um, assumptions about causality or none of the, none of the um, prerequisites have to be fulfilled, it means SEM can never prove causality. We can only reject models when they don't fit or when they don't show the results that we expected, but we can never prove that a causal direction really holds in this in a specific way. So keep that in mind. I hope you like this video on common beginner issues with SEM. I will continue this series here on this channel from time to time. I'll have another video on um, issues like that in which I discuss those and how they might be resolved. Also, please check out the description for um, additional resources, free workshops, and additional videos. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and um, to hit the like button in case you like this video, and I'll see you next week.